So this is the warm up to introduce the graphs of tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant. So the way we're going to approach that is to make a table and fill in the table much like we did for sine and cosine at the very beginning of graphing those. So if you look at this table here, these are just some selected values uh, for x. And we're going to evaluate this table by thinking of our coordinates along the unit circle. So the way I'm going to think about tangent uh, is sine over cosine. And then when I evaluate sine and cosine at 0, their ratio will be my tangent value. So uh, sine of 0 is 0, cosine of 0 is 1, so tangent of 0 would be 0 over 1, which is 0. I'm not going to explain every single uh, input like that, but that's, that's the thought process behind how I'm finding these values, because tangent doesn't explicitly exist on our unit circle. We're going to be finding the ratio of sine over cosine at these specific inputs to evaluate tangent. So tangent of pi over 4 would be 1. And again, you can verify these um, just by looking at the coordinates on the unit circle and doing the y-coordinate over the x-coordinate. Um, tangent of pi over 2 is undefined. We'll talk about what that means graphically, um, but undefined would be the way we describe that. It does not exist is another way you could say that. Um, and we'll look, take a look at what that means on our graph. Um, and then to keep going through the table there, uh, tangent of 3 pi over 4 would be negative 1, and then at pi would be 0, at 5 pi over 4 would be 1, and then at 3 pi over 2 would be undefined again because cosine at 3 pi over 2 is 0. Cosine's in the denominator of tangent, so tangent would be undefined there. And then for the last two points in the table, that's what I would have. And then in terms of plotting this, uh, I'm going to plot the ones that we know for sure, so the coordinates we have, and then we'll talk about what the undefined ones would look like. So here's how I'm going to break up my graph here. Um, just put a tick mark at each angle we have. And zero, tangent is 0, 0. Tangent of pi over 4 is 1. I'm going to skip over pi over 2 and come back to it. So here's what we have for the points in the table. Um, and then at pi over 2, undefined could mean a couple different things in terms of a graph. It could be a hole in the graph, a break in the graph, like just a gap there, or, or an asymptote. Um, and in this case, I could put more, more values in my table, do like pi over 3, and maybe um, values closer and closer to pi over 2 to see what the value of tangent would be. Uh, but to save the time to do that, I'll just tell you uh, this type of undefined for our graph is actually going to be a vertical asymptote. So there's going to be a vertical asymptote at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Um, and then the only thing I'll, I'm going to do here is just go back a little bit. Um, to negative pi over 4, tangent of negative pi over 4 would be negative 1. The only reason I do this is I'm going to talk about kind of where tangent lies about the origin, just so we have an idea of how to draw it. So these are the points that I have. And then what does the shape of the graph look like? You can kind of see this kind of diagonal trajectory of the graph. Um, in order to connect that, like I said, you can plot more points. You could put this in your graphing calculator, obviously. Um, but if there are vertical asymptotes at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, that means tangent needs to be bounded by those um, asymptotes in some regard. So if I, I'm just going to draw the shape of the graph between pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, and this is what tangent would look like between there. So it's going to be fairly close to the vertical asymptote at pi over 2, come up through and kind of curve through pi 0, and then curve through 3 pi over 4, or excuse me, um, yeah, 5 pi over 4, 1. So curve through that and get closer and closer to that vertical asymptote. And that's actually one period of tangent. We'll talk about why the period is just pi here in a second. But um, the reason I drew that point to the left of the x-axis so I can see that portion of the graph as well. That's another um, period of tangent. And then the one to the right of 3 pi over 2. Um, so this is what tangent looks like. Um, and then in terms of the period, like I said, the period is pi, actually. That's not 2 pi like the other trig functions. It's, it's just pi. You can see that that shape there between pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 will repeat itself. And the, the reason why tangent has a period of pi is if you think about the coordinates in quadrant 1 and quadrant 3 on our unit circle, sine and cosine are both positive in quadrant 1, and sine and cosine are both negative in quadrant 3, 
and they're the exact same coordinates, just reflection. So tangent being the ratio of sine over cosine of quadrant one will be positive. Tangent being the ratio of sine over cosine in quadrant three will be negative over a negative, which is also positive. So actually, tangent will have the same values in quadrant one as it does in quadrant three, and have the same values in quadrant two as it does in quadrant four, which means from zero to pi, and then those values will repeat themselves from pi to two pi. So tangent has a period of just pi. Now if you think about cotangent, um, I'm going to think about cotangent very similarly. I'm going to evaluate cotangent by thinking of cosine over sine. The other way you could do it is by taking the, the points we had in our last table and thinking of cotangent as 1 over tangent, which is totally fine. Um, but the reason why I'm going to use cotangent as cosine over sine is because uh, I don't want to have to think of values for tangent every time I want to graph a cotangent um, function. So uh, cotangent is cosine over sine, and I'm going to evaluate the uh, cotangent function it, using the same inputs, very similarly how I did for tangent. So cotangent of 0 would be undefined because sine is 0 um, there. And then pi over 4 would be 1, pi over 2 would be 0, 3 pi over 4 would be negative 1, and at pi, uh, cotangent would be undefined again. And then if I look at the rest of the table, it would follow the exact same pattern. Cotangent will also have a period of pi. Uh, much like tangent, um, because it will repeat itself every uh, pi units. So these are the values that I have in my table. You can verify those using your unit circle. Now if I plot these, uh, you'd probably think this is going to look a lot like tangent, and you'd be right. Um, it's a couple slight differences in terms of where the function is undefined and what the values are in terms of its location, um, but they'll look pretty similar. So plot the points that I know. Uh, so those are the coordinates I have, and then in terms of the undefined ones, it's going to be a vertical asymptote, much like tangent had. The only difference is instead of being at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, these vertical asymptotes are going to be at 0, pi, and 2 pi. So cotangent will have a pretty similar shape, still have some vertical asymptotes, um, but they'll be in a slightly different place. There'll be a phase shift from one another, much like sine and cosine are a phase shift of each other. So you can see that the diagonal now is from left to right going down. So cotangent will look a little bit more like this. It'll curve down through those points and be bounded by those vertical asymptotes. So that's technically what I have drawn. Two periods worth of cotangent. So one period of cotangent is pi. Um, and you can see that right there. That will, from 0 to pi and then from pi to 2 pi, cotangent will repeat itself and that's what they look like. We'll talk a little bit more about where, where the asymptotes occur, what the, how to write the domain and all that in the notes, but this is just meant to get the general shape down for these graphs. Um, and again, you could do this, plot some points, plug them in for sine and cosine. You can generate this shape um, on your own. Now, if you want to take a look at cosecant, I'm going to evaluate cosecant as 1 over sine. So I'm going to evaluate sine at these values in the table, these x values, and then take the reciprocal of that, and that'll be cosecant. And we'll connect cosecant and sine in the graphs as well. But since sine of 0 is 0, cosecant of 0 is undefined. And then I'll put these first few points here in the table. Um, since sine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2, the reciprocal of that is just root 2. Since sine of pi over 2 is 1, the reciprocal of that is 1. And at 3 pi over 4, uh, I get root 2, and at pi, I'm undefined again. Um, and you might be thinking, well, that looks like it's one period. 0 is undefined, pi is undefined. We need to fill in the rest of the table just to verify that um, the function pattern repeats itself. And what you'd see right away is cosecant of 5 pi over 4 is negative root 2, which means uh, since that's not the same as 5 pi over 4, the period can't be pi, and I'll show you that here in a second again. 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. 7 pi over 4 is negative root 2, and 2 pi is undefined. So those are the values of cosecant that I just got from finding values of sine and flipping them over. And then in terms of plotting them, um, let's just put my y-axis scale there from 1 to negative 1. Leave a little room because actually um, root 2 is slightly more than 1. We'll show that in a second. Now in terms of 
what this means for undefined. Uh, again, in this case, cosecant is going to have vertical asymptotes much like tangent and cotangent. So I'm going to put those in first. Those are going to act like boundaries for my parts of my function that I graph. So um, root 2, like I said, is slightly more than 1. It's about 1.414236, and it continues there. So um, at pi over 4, I have a value more than 1, but less than 2, so somewhere around 1.5. And, and then at pi over 2, I get 1. At 3 pi over 2, I get root 2 again. And then at pi is undefined. So that's that first portion there drawn between 0 and pi. And then actually between pi and 2 pi, I would get these three points. And then the vertical asymptotes are already drawn in. So you might be looking at that thinking, okay, maybe this looks like a V, maybe it looks like a U, um, maybe it's kind of like a parabola. And if I connected them, it would look very U-shaped, sort of like a parabola, uh, only I'm not going to call it that. The major reason why is parabolas continue to get wider and um, steeper as the they move away from the center or the the vertex and this will to some degree the only major difference is these vertical asymptotes are going to act like boundary lines so I'm not going to call it specifically a parabola I'm just going to say u-shaped but it is you know symmetric like a parabola it is u-shaped like a parabola it's just not specifically a parabola and again that's probably just me being a little bit picky um, and then the same shape will connect this lower portion of cosecant and that right there is actually the graph of cosecant that's one period of cosecant but what I really want to do is kind of connect this to our sine graph so if I sketched y equals sine of x on the same axis so I'm plot the points for sine of x and just connect them with this this dotted function here there's a couple of things that we should definitely see in terms of the connection between these two graphs uh, it's, one period, sine has a period of 2 pi, so cosecant also has a period of 2 pi. You can see that between 0 and pi, that U-shaped happens, but then between pi and 2 pi, it's the same kind of U-shape, but underneath the x-axis, so not specifically a repeat. But then, if you think about where sine of x crosses the x-axis at those three places, that's where cosecant has vertical asymptotes. And that's actually how we're going to graph cosecant, is by graphing a sine function and then drawing vertical asymptotes through the intercepts. And if you look at the maximum and minimum of my sine graph, they actually share that point with the U-shaped portions of cosecant. But then um, cosecant will go up from that maximum of sine and down from that minimum of sine, rather than you know touching the x-axis or sharing any more points. So if we draw a sine function, we can basically get all the things we need about cosecant just from the way the sine function looks, where the intercepts are the asymptotes and where the max and min are that's going to share that point with cosecant. No matter how I shift or stretch um, or adjust the period, it'll, that, those properties will always be the same. And then in terms of secant, I'm going to do something very similar for secant. I'm going to evaluate secant by thinking of values of cosine. So cosine of 0 is 1, so the reciprocal of 1 is 1. Cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2, so the reciprocal is root 2. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so secant is undefined at pi over 2. And then uh, fill in these other values, thinking of values of cosine and taking the reciprocal of them. And that's what I would get if I were to fill in my table of secant, just by thinking of the values of uh, cosine, which is why we spend a ton of time thinking of these coordinates and being able to evaluate sine and cosine because it really, really uh, helps you out when it's time to graph. So if I want to put these points on a graph, again, root 2 is about 1.4, so I'm going to um, plot the points that we have, so 0, 1. Uh, pi over 4 is about 1.4-ish, uh, and then at pi over 2, there's a vertical asymptote there. And then uh, plot the other points there. You can see that secant is going to make a very similar shape to cosecant. The major difference is just going to be where uh, these points are located. So vertical asymptotes at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. And then uh, it's going to make these U-shaped uh, parts of the function much like cosecant did, uh, just in a slightly different place. So again, here's what secant looks like. It has vertical asymptotes and makes these kind of U-shaped pieces above and below the x-axis, which if I were to draw in a cosine function over the same interval, 
you can see that the, the properties of secant are very closely connected to the values of cosine. So where uh, cosine would cross the x-axis, there would be vertical asymptotes there where the maximums and minimums of cosine occur. Um, secant shares those values, so these U-shaped portions will touch um, the cosine graph and the, those maximums and minimums, and then the period of secant will be 2 pi, just like the period of cosine is 2 pi. And then this last question at the bottom, what, the, what is the amplitude? The way we're gonna, the book's going to define it is they're going to call the amplitude undefined, because technically speaking, the function doesn't reach a maximum or minimum. Uh, secant, cosecant, tangent, cotangent, they increase and decrease without bound. So technically, um, that number out in front is still going to affect the shape of the graph. We're just not specifically going to call it the amplitude because they increase and decrease without bound. Um, one way to describe it is that the amplitude is actually undefined. Uh, we'll spend a little bit more time graphing these um, in the notes, but that's an introduction to the shape of all four of those graphs.